trends. So they're, they're looking for uh, failures that we have that aren't, uh, that aren't really explainable. In other words, you know, was it something that was inside of its cycle and we kind of expected it? In other words, if, a, if I have a failure within a week of its shop date, that's really not an unexpected so much, right? But if I start out with a lot of those, then obviously my, maybe my cycle's going to go off. So now I need to understand what's causing that to happen. It's an environmental factor. Is it an engineering issue? Uh, what are those things? So what my group, maybe planning does, is we identify uh, what's going on. We get uh, equipment engineering often to help us. So uh, if it's a technical issue, we'll have to ask for assistance from someone else. We identify the trend. We identify what the root cause is. And then, of course, once you have your root cause, then we can identify an inspection interval that it should go to uh, to make it more reliable and make it less likely that we're going to have a failure over the road. Uh, so we apply those practices really to every fleet that we have. Um, you know, I can give you examples of, of where we've used it, but the P32 fleet is, a, is probably the one that sticks out in my mind the most. Uh, that that locomotive is over 20 years old at this point. That, that's an interesting question you bring up. Because Amtrak is struggling with those locomotives also. Well, I, I'm not going to say we're not struggling. You know, it, it is a, it's definitely a challenge. I won't say it's a struggle, but it's a challenge to make sure that we're, we're keeping up with the RCM and we're, we're uh, understanding what the, the limitations are from a vendor support standpoint. Uh, so as locomotives get older and equipment gets older, you also run into the problem where maybe a vendor doesn't make that product anymore, or they haven't made it in so long that you have very long lead times. Uh, so that's all part of maintenance planning to try to understand where am I, where am I going to be in a few months or in a year, and what do I have to do to make sure that I have material available so when that component becomes more troublesome, I don't have to wait the lead time. I've kind of already built it into my plan. Uh, so that's a lot of what we're doing on the uh, P32 fleet. We have a phase one and a phase two RCM program that we're currently underway. Uh, phase one is about Oh, halfway through our phase one program. Phase one is replacement of the engine and the main alternators of some very major components. Uh, phase two will be smaller components with longer lead times. Uh, so we're replacing more of the electronic components during our phase two overhaul of the, of the RCM overhaul of the P2 fleet. Um, and that's actually uh, scheduled to begin in the fourth quarter of uh, 2018. A little bit different approach. Uh, phase one from a planning standpoint, it was planned, okay, obviously major components like an engine, you're going to need some shop space and time. When it comes to electronic components, it's much faster to turn the, that material. So we've actually scheduled it in as part of its 92-day inspection cycle, be able to say, okay, we're going to do this work on that 92-day inspection cycle. So it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of planning and a, and a lot of uh, scheduling that, that we're doing behind the scenes, uh, but things are going pretty well at that time. So. So we're happy with, with that, and, and again, RCM is, is really proving its, uh, its worth you know, for us. So, um, I guess I'll touch base on West of Hudson next. I know there were some questions you know, regarding the West of Hudson uh, and how we kind of interact with them. So uh, maintenance planning, Metro North Maintenance Planning has a weekly meeting with the Maintenance of Equipment Department at New Jersey Transit. So every week we have a call in. Uh, we go through <clears throat> all of the current shop equipment. We talk about what's going on with that equipment, all the current shop Metro North equipment. We, we talk about what it's in the shop for, uh, what they've done, what the issues could be. And uh, of course, those conversations are really geared towards what can Metro North Maintenance Planning do to assist New Jersey Transit in getting that equipment through its line. So in other words, maybe we've seen some things on our diesel fleet that can help them, or maybe they need some other sort of technical assistance that we can offer. The diesel fleet is much more, well, actually that's not true, but they do have the, the Alps and the 45 and the 242, which are new. Right. right. Yeah, so, so, but, you know, I think between the, the two groups, there's, there's a lot that we uh, kind of take away from each other in terms of what diesel fleets and, and the shoreliner fleet that they have, the common fleet that they have, is very similar to our shoreliner fleet. So, um, you know, yes. we're, we're here. But not the common fines. Not the common fines, no, that's true. Uh, but we're, we're still able to uh, to help each other through technical issues. And we're also there to support them with uh, special projects like cameras and so forth, uh, their PTC program. So 
we're constantly getting updates, maintenance planning reviews, and it's constantly getting updates on a weekly basis in terms of those projects. In addition to that, we have a quality assurance group uh, that goes to New Jersey Transit on a month, quarterly basis, not monthly, quarterly. Uh, they do one periodic inspection quarterly. So they could look at a locomotive, or they might look at a couple of common fives, but they're, they're current. I guess they are. Uh, those are common fives. So you have six, we have 65 yeah. of them. Okay. All right. We have 15 engines. Right. Okay. That was right the first time. Sorry. <laughs> but common in any case, it's actually two common threes you have. That's right. They're parked up in the park. Yeah. 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 That's right. So in any case, we do have our quality assurance folks go out. They do their uh, periodic inspection, uh, compliance inspections, I should say, um, on a quarterly basis. We also have our engineering group that, that works with New Jersey Transit when it comes to things like cameras and special projects. Uh, in fact, today we were supposed to have our quality assurance group and equipment engineering folks out at New Jersey Transit for their camera project, but it got postponed until next week. So you know, that's just an example of that we are uh, you know, having a conversation with them and we are involved in their, their weekly activities out there. So, and monitoring what they do and how they get their money out. So. Were there some cars lost in Sandy? They were damaged. They were damaged. They were rolled back. Yeah. Yeah, that. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but during Sandy, I was in a, uh, I had a different capacity, oh, so it wasn't really. Uh, you were doing the training. Well. Mm -hmm. well, actually, during Sandy, no, I was doing uh, uh, calendar day mechanical inspection compliance. Oh, oh. So okay. that was a different role. role. <laughs> different role. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other side of the coin here is uh, CDOT. So we also work with CDOT uh, from a maintenance planning standpoint uh, because obviously CDOT owns a portion of the ME fleet. So we work closely with CDOT to make sure that really they understand what it is that we're doing to their car and that they're happy with what it is that we're doing. And also their shoreliners, so they have. They do, they have a, that's right, they have a portion of the shoreliners as well, right? So the ME fleet and the shoreliner fleet uh, both are owned by uh, CDOT. So we maintain the equipment for CDOT in a, in a group pool. So it's not that we treat their cars differently. Uh, they get the same level of maintenance and the same level of attention as any other Metro North car would get. It's just, you know, it happens to be the red and not blue. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really the gist of it. But yeah, we, we interface with uh, CDOT to uh, you know, update them on where we are with the maintenance of the, of the equipment. In other words, how many have we put through various inspections and programs. Do you handle their P40s also? Uh, we don't maintain the P40s, but they do have P40s that they... For the Amtrak. Yeah, yeah. Amtrak takes care of all that uh, Shoreline East uh, maintenance yeah. that needs to happen for, for CDOT. So they also run the service from New Haven out to New London and New Haven to Harvard. So, so how does that, with the New Haven yard, that's owned by CDOT? Or, yes. Right? Yeah, all the facilities and the, uh, the actual real estate. CDOT. So, so when a, a capital improvement upgrading or whatever needs to happen, mm -hmm. that happens out of the CDOT budget? Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to give you the, the exact breakdown of how that happens, but my understanding is that's how it happens. Yeah. Because yeah. I so just wonder CDOT you, pays for the, yeah, for the facilities. For the capital program, if you're, you have recommendations of we right, to see right. these improvements, yes. then you come up with a budget, and maybe it's a shared budget that right, or right. something that. Yeah, that's for, how for CDOT, I, I think maybe the it's all question them. is it's all them financially, but Metro North obviously had a, a big input into what right what the, the shop. work actually is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's well, the, the layout of the shops and the, and the design yeah. of the building and the workflows and things like that. Yeah, we had a we had you know, pretty much worked with them hand in hand, but they listened very closely to. That's good. Yeah, that's a good working relationship with them. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I, We've done it. I think so. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank, thank you very you. much. Sure. Thank you. I guess we just were great. Yeah. I will say yesterday, Randy and I had some discussion with, with Bob Laval. We had a, an advocates meeting. Okay. And <laughs> we were concerned particularly about the reliability of equipment mm -hmm. and how well New Jersey Transit is maintaining it. Sure, sure. Primarily because of the service provided on the Pascag Valley line, okay. which is slightly different than on the Port Jervis line, because most of the equipment on the Port Jervis line is dedicated to the Port Jervis line, and they keep it there, you know, so but the, we get the mix of all the equipment. 
uh, but uh, wanted to make sure that it was more reliable. And they've made a commitment to uh, make sure that we have more reliable service and less break-ins, less trains canceled. It's, it is better this year. Than it it's gotten better recently. Yeah, yeah. You know, in fact, we even forced a big powwow with uh, New Jersey Transit and our county executive because uh, they were watching to see how how many trains were being canceled for mechanical reasons just by going on to you know, the, the, the New Jersey Transit alerts. Right. And uh, it was it was getting to a point where uh, we were all getting concerned. So we were said that we were promised that up in wood, Woodline that they would have enough technical people there to make sure the equipment was running better, and it seems to be running better now. Yeah, they have a good group in their camp department. I, I believe they have it in there, the people I've worked with. Mm -hmm. A little yeah, bit of history. They have dedicated additional manpower and, and resources and yeah. spent a lot of money so okay. Right. Well, Bob Lavelle now, he's, he's general manager of rail operations in his previous thing, he was chief mechanical officer. Right. You ought to know how to make <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an brand, yes. For, um, so, so we work on the 20-year needs assessment, which has been, you know, sure. we are supportive of the capital program and giving okay. input. So that's right. a, uh, my question, which relates sort of to the language that we use as we're talking about these things and understanding it. Sure. Um, so do you, or will you be doing a uh, sort of long-range um, exercise for the 20-year needs assessment that looks at things like, you know, through running service and what the car needs would be, you know, mm -hmm. if you get to that point. Well, we actually, uh, that. maybe I'll answer your question okay. and see if I answer it yeah, what yeah. you're looking for. But from a planning standpoint, we actually look at the car from, you know, from inception to what we anticipate to be the retirement, which is usually about 30 to 40 years, depending on the point. But right now, 30 years seems to be uh, where we stop that planning function. Uh, just because of, you know, history shows us that's pretty much the, the life expectancy of the vehicle. The transit authority is running the subway cars. Both in 1964 and R32. Right, right, right. Stay right. steel. Right. Um, so, so we actually map it out. Yeah, we, we try to see uh, where we're going to be. And, and of and course... And size also, you, that's in the map also? Um, to be honest, no, not so much. I mean, the, the fleet size, it, it, Whatever car we're talking about, I don't think, you know, over time, you're not going to get any more. That's one of the issues that we have, right? So in, in terms of one particular fleet. So if you have an M7 fleet of you know, 336 cars, hopefully right. in 30 years I have 336 cars. Uh, I don't, I mean, cars, total, I don't mean an individual <laughs> fleet type. I mean total, oh, okay. total seats available now versus how many you may need in the future. And yeah, well, well, you know, part of that is uh, as you look for a replacement, I think it's yeah. always an expansion of the fleet as we discussed uh, you know, a few moments ago. Yeah. It, it is a matter of more service, more you know, capacity. Um, so, so definitely. So also, yeah. if, you, if you want to increase service, you're going to need more equipment to run more. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of those future services, I guess. That's that's right. Yeah, that is part of the, the planning process is to, to understand what ridership, where ridership is, and how that could affect us long term. So, you know, what what my group does is really look at the fleets that I have mm -hmm. and talk about oh, how okay. much, how much, you know, from a cost perspective, how much does it cost me to maintain that vehicle this year, next year? Five years from now, ten years from now, you know. So we're putting uh, to make sure, it, right, to try to understand where's the best place to replace them. Mm -hmm. They may not be thirty years; it might be twenty-five, okay. right? Okay. So but we're trying to give that information, enough information, so that we can all understand. You know, I'm spending a be lot stable. of money on new cars, right. but that new car is going to be over the long haul less expensive than trying to keep this car in service. So do that's you part do of those charts? Because it's something that we. You know, are interested in for transit. Right. Uh, well, you hope if you're paying so much in maintenance, mm -hmm. you know, and but you uh, an investment. Yes, it looks right. like a lot, but you'll reduce on the operating side. Where's the return on investment? Yeah. Right. Right. So that, right. Uh, we, do, we do provide that information to the folks, the capital folks, really, who are uh, kind of out there looking at what is it going to cost to buy yeah. a new fleet. But we're also trying to give people an up, an up, to, you know, up to date kind of forward look. Yeah. So you do realize that if we keep the cars. Uh, you know, at year 20, I'm going to replace all the traction motors, and all of those traction motors are going to cost you X million right. dollars. Right. Right. So maybe we need to consider what we're going to do. Is there something else we can do? Right. So those are the kind of things that, from a maintenance planning perspective, those are that's the information that we're providing. Which that could so totally be applied to transit. 
Yes. Like your, your method of doing that, right. connecting right. the operating with the capital. Right. Um, right. Yeah. As far as the yeah, and that's a, that's exactly where EAM kind yeah. of comes in because we get an opportunity to to talk share and, and to share best practices, yeah. and uh, you know we actually have uh, monthly meetings where we all get together and one group will present a, a problem that they had and how they solved it. So you that's know it's those kind of gatherings that that really help to you know bring back to Metro North or whatever yeah. property somebody's from. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. thanks. Right. Very interesting presentation. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So our, our uh, next um, get together is June eighth. That's the quarterly uh, ECAC meeting. And thank you. Thank you. We hope to have to see everybody there in person. Please. We hope to have some Amtrak folks there and. and uh, Possibly some other some other folks to talk about what the what, what's happening at Penn Station, what the implications of it are. So, and then on July twentieth is our next meeting, just us. So, um, and then we're, is then we're off. We're off for uh, for August. August. That's yeah. our only our only summer meeting for Metro North Council. So, is uh, anybody on the phone? Thank you for being there. Do you have any questions? Any, anything you want to say before we ask for the German? Okay. I guess I said, uh, oh, no. it's a no from the phone. Yeah, okay. It's not from the phone. Yeah. One of the things that, that, that came out very, very strongly to me is the poor cell phone recept reception in Grand Central Terminal. And it doesn't oh, yeah. work at all in the you tunnel. You have to stand in certain spots. Yeah. Yeah, that is just, I mean, I don't know why it has to be that poor. You know, I, I also don't understand why, why it doesn't work in Park Avenue tunnels. Mm -hmm. so yeah. And I think we, we this is something that should be looked into. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there anybody uh, in Metro North that's working on this? Um, you would see a phone call going home on Monday and yeah. we lost the call. Yeah, yeah, so as soon as the train went into the, the tunnel, so it, it, it calmed down. Yeah, in this day and age, there's no reason why it can't work. All oh, right. Oh, I thought you, yeah. but you're not talking just in the terminal. No, no both. You're talking both in the places. It's yeah. just not the okay. Uh, well, but you know, there are places in the tunnel that doesn't like, work well, and there are places in the tunnels it does not work at all. It doesn't work at all yeah. in the tunnels. I wait till we but come out But it's like, of yeah, it's you know one of the few places where Penn Station has better performance. Yeah, so it like, does. Why can't they do it here? Yeah. I mean, you know, down on the lower level. Yeah. You know, why would that be? No. Uh, I think that this is something that the, this this group on the radar screen of getting done. Right, yeah. and who, who, I don't know who's been assigned responsibility. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we can track it. We can try to track down somebody. I mean, MTA New York City Transit done a pretty good job of making that subway station. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's a long stretch when you're in those tunnels. Of yeah. yeah. But to me, it, it's incredible because you're in Midtown Manhattan, in the most mm -hmm. populated area in the world, and your cell phones don't work. Right. I mean, I'm not even asking Wi-Fi, just basic cell phone yeah. service. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I, you know, the, 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 the stuff in the subway, in the subways, the Wi-Fi was sort of a throw-in. They were going to run, run, run the fiber anyway, they might as well. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. what about the uh, tunnels on the Park Avenue? But, yeah, yeah no, there's no reason they should be able to, that, that should be something there where they should be able to get an age. They should be yeah. able to get reception through there. There's not your money. We need to talk about the maintenance. But is that something that's paid for by the contractor anyway? Um, well, it depends. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're going to if you're going to have have um, you know cell reception in there, you would you probably have something like Transit Wireless who would yeah. who would who would charge the charge the carriers for. For reception in, the, in that. So it's in that the carriers would want it because yeah. they, right. sure. they I mean, want yeah, the no, it's, it's a selling point. If you, yeah. you that that you know you can. All right, so you'll find out who. We'll works. find out who's 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 responsible and what's what's mm -hmm. being what's being done. Maybe uh, on that one, we can know what was done at, at Penn Station. Yeah, I think that was about that. that was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. That, that was largely an Amtrak effort, but I don't. But I can but I check, what what, check were and see who involved. Yeah. Or, yeah, and that's been there for a while. That's oh, I know. I, I, yeah. One day the train broke down in the tunnel under the Hudson River, but my Verizon cell phone yeah, works. Yeah, your cell phone still works. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, but yeah.
Yeah. All right, so if we've done the district, so a motion to adjourn. Motion yeah, to adjourn. Second. Times square, where they hit several people. Second. Open the phone. Somebody on the phone? Anybody still there? I think we may have lost our phone, folks. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll adjourn. And you know, you know, Bill, this is something you can always say it's safety. Something goes wrong on a train in those tunnels. Yeah.